we know a little about each other, then we can be more comfortable and more at home. We're going to go right into um, one of the reasons why we're here to share information. Our first speaker is a great brother. He deals with educating us on food sovereignty. As you know, you may not be aware, but Africa is importing $145 billion worth of food into Africa every year. Africa is the richest continent. We can grow food 12 months out of a year. I'm an organic farmer, so I understand. So he deals with trying to prevent Monsanto's and all those wicked people from bringing scientific concoctions to kill us yes. in Africa. So, yes. um, and he's also one of the directors of the Black Star Credit Union, helping us to break the stranglehold of the economic uh, monsters like the IMF and the World Bank and all of these so-called banks uh, who are the real bank robbers. He, I read an article once that banks are the bank robbers. They're the real bank robbers. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Brother Evan Bifard to come and give us some information. Thank you, David and uh, Bomani, and uh, welcome to all of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, especially for those of you who's your first time coming back home. Um, this is such a glorious time for you. You don't realize what you've done yet. You're about to, you're about to, um, you know what's better. Okay. You're about to realize exactly what you've done in coming home, in returning and completing a 360 cycle that your ancestors left here in the most degrading and violent, you know, experience. And for you to come back, you're literally the ambassador of your whole people. Everybody in the past and everybody in the future. So I really salute each and every one of you. And like I said, um, you're about to see Ghana and witness Ghana and understand exactly what I mean by you're the ambassador and you've made it and you're victorious. So first of all, I just want to put that out there. So thank you very much for coming home. And Akwaba. All right. Um, I am the chairperson of the Black Star Line Cooperative Credit Union. So when black people gather like this and we're trying to, you know, look at ways to really move forward and progress, we have to ask ourselves, the real thing that is always a stumbling block is our finances, <coughs> you know, the money. And you know, money is what moves the world. But ironically, if we are the richest people on the planet, our resources uh, far outweigh any other planets. Africa has gold, diamond, bauxite, copper, you know, cobalt, you name it, it's in Africa. Oil, timber, and all down the line. But anytime we talk about our finances, we end up putting our money in someone else's bank. We end up building somebody else's institution. We never build our own. We never put our money together. So I remember when I used to live in the US, you go to the malls and you see it's our brothers and sisters that come out of the shops with lots of bags because we have the consumer power. We buy, and um, but we don't buy our own. We don't build our own. So the Black Star Line Cooperative Credit Union was established in 2009 uh, by the Rastafari Council of Ghana, and it was as exactly to you know, create a financial legacy institution that was inspired by the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. And you know Marcus Mosiah Garvey, all of you are wearing red, black, and green. He's the one who unified this family. He's the one who charted the way forward and showed us the vision that unity was the ultimate objective of black people all over the world. And so our credit union is modeled after that inspiration and we are a credit union that's owned by members. We have 1,500 members. Um, and we have a website, www.bslccu.org. We have a table at the back there with my colleagues who can assist you in how to open an account um, to learn more about our products. Basically, 60% of our members actually live outside Ghana. So we're talking about the US, Jamaica, Canada. Um, most of our members live in Canada. Um, but we're growing our local Ghana market here now. But you know that the Marcus Garvey brand is so large that this is a credit union that really should be all over the world wherever black people exist. Because black people exist all over the world, but we, we bank with other people. We put our finances in other people's pockets. So I'm hoping that each and every one of you, before you leave Ghana, would have sown a seed, opened an account, so that all your aspirations, your ideas, you want to come and buy land, you want to move home, you want to build a house, with our products you can start saving. And we have more attractive interest rates than you earn you know, out west with your money. So 
we've been in existence for 10 years. We just celebrated our 10th anniversary. And um, basically, we're trying to run this so that we leave a legacy institution for the next generation. But it's very important that people like you come home and bring your money home. Don't put your money in the banks uh, that don't respect your kind, that don't invest in your communities, um, and that don't, don't have any real long-term positive objective for your people. So I, I just want to encourage you to visit our table at the back there and really understand that it's putting our money and our resources together that creates a strength. Kwame Nkrumah told us that you know the, the independence of Ghana was meaningless unless it was linked with the liberation of total Africa. And it's true, and that extends to even our brothers and sisters in Cuba, in Brazil, in the US, in Canada, Jamaica. So when you see a legacy institution like the Black Starline Credit Union, support it like we support Nike, like we support all the other brands, you know, Mercedes-Benz and so on and so forth. Let's start building our own legacy institutions. So please make sure that before you go back, visit our table, get some information, and spread the word when you go back to your communities. Because this is what Marcus Garvey wanted. And we're very proud that we're one of the only institutions worldwide that's modeled off of his philosophy and his existence and is doing something good. So there's communities in Ghana where taxi drivers have been saving money, have bought their own taxis, uh, seamstresses have bought their own sewing machines and stuff, but it's progress from a grassroots level. That's the kind of development that we need. You know, a lot of the development sometimes that you see around the skyscrapers and the big uh, shops and the big malls, a lot of that money is taken back out of Ghana and goes back out to the West. So we need to support things that are on the grassroots, that um, develop the communities, and so the next generation doesn't come and suffer the way we've suffered because we're literally walking on gold and we're hustling. But it takes us putting our resources together to break that chain. So please visit our table and support the Black Star Line um, and long live Marcus Garvey. I just want to say something short too about food sovereignty Ghana. I'm also the community.